Greetings, my brothers and my sisters. This is Pastor Ian bringing you greetings from the Refuge Assembly of Yahweh, located 2808 Grand Street, the city of North Virginia. But once again, we thank Yahweh for another opportunity to come to your homes and to your cars and your jobs where you might be today. But this is the day that Yahweh has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in We have so much to give and praise for. He's been back to us and we've been to ourselves. Some say, if I ate 10,000 tons, I couldn't praise him enough for what he's done and for what he's going to do. Beloved, today on our premise, we have Brother Robert Vanderbilt, Brother Sean Johnson of North Carolina, Brother Leon Anthony Woodbury Sr., Sister Doris Potter, Brother Dan Lola, and Sister Rosanna of Los Angeles, California, Sister Sharon Jackson of Chicago, Illinois, Sister Cecilia West of North Virginia, Sister Deborah and Brother George Butler, and Brother George Butler Jr. Mother Florence Grant of Richmond, Virginia. Dickie Joseph I. Sr. of North Virginia. Sister Henrietta Benjamin. Sister Maddie and Brother Henry Hazel of Mississippi. Sister Joy Van Simon of New York. Sister Mary Jackson. Sister Sharon Jackson. New York. Sister Diane Bowie, Brother Darrell Bowie, and Brother Ewan Bowie, all of New York. Sister Connie Wynn, Brother Brian K. Sullivan of Upper Marlboro Mountain. Sister Bertha Morris, Sister Bernice Nuttis, Sister Margaret Woodbury, Brother Isaac Elcher. Brother Randolph Whitehurst, Sister Cynthia Sims, Brother Robert Childs, Brother Lewis Anderson, to the Assembly of Yahweh King William County, Bankman, Virginia, <coughs> Pastor Elder Joseph Sims Jr. and the Assembly family, to the Refuge Temple Assembly of Yahweh, Richmond, Virginia, Pastor Bishop Milton J. Hunt, and the assembly family. To our little brother in Iraq, brother Elisha Butler, and the Butler family and the entire family, we're praying for you. Sister Shirley Dickinson, we all in our hearts, we're praying for you. Sister Patricia Watha, we're praying for you, our dear sister. To all of our youth, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, to the parents of all of our youth, we're praying for you. To the assembly of Yahweh in North Virginia, to all of your families, we're praying today for you. And Yahweh will meet us here today and give you into the supplications and the petitions being offered today. Yahweh, eternal Father, once again, we thank you for this another day that you have allowed. We thank you for our last night's sleep girl rise this morning for the blood circling woman in our veins, for the activity of limbs and muscles. We praise you right now, Yahweh, for you are the mighty one of all flesh and you declare that anything too hard for you. We come today boldly to the throne to obtain help in the time of need. Knowing that it is in you, Father, that we live, we move, and we have our existence. Yahweh, we realize there's nothing like you. You are our strength, you are the source of our joy, you are the source of our peace. And Father, we come today petitioning right now. As we approach your throne, Lord, as we know how, look down upon your children, right? There. Those Yahweh Father, right now, Father, who are going through health issues. Those right now, Yahweh, who have all manner of health problems they're facing right now in their life. Father, give near to their supplications and their petitions right now. We know you to be that doctor who never lost a patient. And Father, we know right now that all manner of disease bows to your authority. Hallelujah. Yahweh, today we come to you as long as we know how. Thank you for your son Yeshua coming to die that we might have a right to the tree of life. Father, that life that we're going to have more abundantly, even here on earth, Yahweh, we thank you for opening the eyes of our understanding that they will be continuously enlightened according to the granted word of your truth. For you declare your word, Yahweh, for the hour and other, for the 
the true worshippers, those who would worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is our desire today, Yahweh, to walk in the ordinances and the precepts of Your Word. Yahweh, continue to order our steps right now in Your Word. Continue, Yahweh, to increase our understanding of Your Word. Yahweh, continue to put that seed planted in our hearts of your word. Father, today look down upon the servant. Look down upon those right here in the tenders. Look down upon those right here, Yahweh, who may be traveling across the dangerous highway. Move by your power and by your spirit. That your malachians right there, Yahweh, give for Yahweh charge over your children to keep and protect them from all evil. For Yahweh, today right now, Father, this is the day you have made. You have made it. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. For the joy of Yahweh is our strength. Father, today we realize that only you can give them as of all understanding is that peace that we adore, that we embrace, that we thank you for each thing. God, we thank you for the week you brought us. Thank you for the times that you were there when we needed you. Thank you for the doors that you opened. Thank you for the way that you made. Thank you for your protection. Oh, Yahweh, right now. Oh, Yahweh, thank you. Hallelujah. We know you can be Yahweh. Shepherd, Yahweh Rod. You are Yahweh the Kadesh. You are Yahweh Tiskanu. You are Yahweh Zabor. You are Yahweh Olam. You are Yahweh the Rock and the Amen. You are Yahweh Nissan. We thank you right now for being Yahweh Tiskanu. You are our righteousness. We come today, Father, for your visitation. We ask that you would look down about this service today to touch you. Your servant today. Continue, Yahweh, to open the eyes of our understanding, our ears, that we may hear. And give us a heart to obey your word, to seek you in a difficult time in which we live. Father, today, look down upon every soul that is selling our hearts, those who are visiting today, Yahweh, those, Yahweh, who are. Viewing by Zoom, look down upon each home right now. Strengthen right now. Y'all in that situation, that circumstance. Y'all, you know right now the petitions of your children. You know their call. You know their supplications. You know their needs right now. Move by your power and by your spirit right now. We know that all power is in your mighty hand. Y'all, we today. Today. Meet us here. Be with us, Father. And strengthen your children. These and many, many, many Moroccans we ask in the name of Yeshua and Mashiach. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's a peace with God alone. Though our hearts and flesh may fail. There's an anchor for our souls. We can say it is well.
Yahweh consistent guarantee. To Yahweh Yahweh praise. So much to give him praise.
Yahweh's been good. All right. That's right. All right. How many of you can say Yahweh's been good? Yes. He's been good to you. Yes. Thank you, Yahweh, today for those of you in attendance. Praising him for another day that he has allowed. So much to give him praise for. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise him enough for what he's done and for what he's going to do. I'm thankful today for all of you who are present today. Thanking Yahweh for your continuous prayers and words of encouragement. And I'm thankful for his word today. As I was reflecting on the week and I began to ponder the wonderful words that Yahweh has showered down down through the ages we got so much to give him praise for. Yes. I am always thinking about the Culminating events that are taking place right before our eyes. Hallelujah. Just this week, we had the retaliation of the nation of Israel responding to yes. Iran. Yes. For many of you who may not know, Iran is a new name. Mm hmm that was given to us in 1935. Mm -hmm. Before it was called Iran, the name was Persia. Mm -hmm. In the book of Ezekiel, Yahweh shares with us many prophetic prophecies and scripture is being unfolded every day right in front of our eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a beautiful thing to know Yahweh's word and it's a beautiful thing to be a child that's trying to do their best to obey Yahweh's word. Hallelujah. I'm thankful today for all of you in attendance and I want you to pray for Pastor E today. For the message today is very clear. It's somewhat, somewhat of an evangelistic cry out an appeal that has been a part of my ministry for as long as I can remember. And it's one that needs to be echoed every day. Hallelujah. For the curtains are open, the stage is set, and all the players are in place. In just a few days from now, the world will be watching the events of this nation and all that it has been taking part in for the last couple of months, the election of a new leader for this nation. Mm -hmm. I don't have a political sermon today, but I will continue to echo the words of Yahweh and that we put no confidence in man. It is not for us to be concerned or worried about the outcome of this election Amen. or who comes into power. Amen. Because ultimately, we're not going to stand before any one candidate in the end. There is something we always need to be cognizant of and That is the judgment that will take place at the end. Hallelujah. There are two judgments mm -hmm. that are going to take place in the end. Mm -hmm. The judgment seat of Yeshua HaMashiach and the great white throne judgment. <clears throat> One needs to clarify for some time believers and non-believers are a little confused. The judgment seat of Yahshua 
Noted in Romans 14, 10 through 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 through 15, and 2 Corinthians 59 and 10. <coughs> the judgment seat of Yahshua is only for believers. Hallelujah. The judgment seat of Yahshua is not for unbelievers. It is for believers. And the believers will appear before Yahshua himself. Yahshua will be there to reward the faithful service of Yahweh's children. After the caught up, the world knows as the rapture, during the tribulation before the millennium, there will be no condemnation Romans 8, 1 tells us faithful believers will receive rewards for their service to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Any good works done in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach will be rewarded as a prelude to eternity spent in the presence of Yahweh himself. Hallelujah. Each person's motives Desires and reasons for serving Yahweh will be judged. Works rooted in pure motives will be rewarded. All others will be burned. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 through 15. No, all believers will stand blameless before the throne because of Yahshua HaMashiach's righteousness which delivers them from the punishment their sins deserve. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, fourth chapter of Romans, verse 22 through 25, and Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Serving Yahweh faithfully, and in the light of eternity, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 9, do not judge others. Trust Yahweh. Trust Yahweh's perfect wisdom and judgments. Romans 4, 10 and 12. The great white throne, as I said, is the second judgment. And the great white throne's judgment is for unbelievers. To settle accounts of those who rebel against Yahweh's righteousness. After the millennium before the lake, the lake of fire. Everyone who is spiritually dead, who has not put faith in Yahshua, the Lamb, will be judged. There will be no defense, and there will be no appeal. The spiritually dead will be thrown into the lake of fire. Hallelujah. Eternally separated from Yahweh's presence. Hallelujah. All who stand before the judge at the great white throne will be condemned. Mm. But the fire will be hotter for some than others. Romans chapter 2 and verse 6 tells us, even Revelations 20 and 13. And in the second chapter of Romans, it speaks explicitly regarding homosexuality and Yahweh's plans for mankind. I can't imagine the fire being hotter for some other individuals. Yet, yes, anyone who has rejected Yahweh's gift of salvation, being Yahshua himself, will receive the due punishment for their sins. Yes. John 3, 18 to the 20th verse. He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already mm -hmm. because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. This is the judgment, the condemnation, that light hath come into the world for men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So anyone who rejects Yahweh's gift, which is salvation, Yahshua himself, 
will receive the due punishment for their sins. Repent and believe in the good news, Mark 1, 5, and do not wait. There may not be another chance. This leads me to my thought today as I want to reflect on a passage of scripture that has been a part of my ministry for years in keeping with the word of Yahweh and for the ambassadors who have taught us the way. We have so many examples of believers who at once at one time walked with us who are now sleeping in their graves, who shared with us, who tried to show us the way. This morning, I heard in my spirit the voice of Mother Carrie, who used to be a member here many, 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 many years ago. Hallelujah. And, she, and I could hear her saying, just hold on. <laughs> Help is on the way. That's right. And she was a mother we would pick up on Sunday mornings and bring to the assembly. She and Mother Narkett and Mother Atkinson, Mother Artish. And I'm going back, I'm going back into the 80s. I'm mm -hmm. going back into the 70s. Oh, yeah. These are believers who at one time sat in these pews in this assembly, mothers who have gone on. But as we begin to reflect on our message today and we think about the time in which we're living, and just a few days ago, Israel, we know as Israel, retaliated and went in and hit strategic missile ports, depots in Iran, strategically hit them. Oh, yeah. And you think about Iran and you think about Iraq, mm -hmm. two names that we have. Iraq is the ancient Babylon. Oh, yes. Mm. Iran is the ancient Persia. Right. And both are solidified today in scripture and in the prophecies being fulfilled. Hallelujah. We cannot ignore prophetic prophecies that are taking place in our day and time. There is a silent killer among us that's taking people out by the thousands. And its name is procrastination. Oh yes. Procrastination is a terrible force to be a, a part of. And when you think about procrastination, putting things off for another time, for another day, for another minute, for another second. That's right. It's interesting, as I look at some of these passages of scriptures, and I'm gonna give you more word today than Pastor E reflecting and embellishing, but I want you to listen to some of these scriptures that have something to do and deal with procrastination. See, there's nothing new under the sun that's taking place. My thought today, of course, is going to come from Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 15. And in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 15, the word of Yahweh lets us know as it has been said today, 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 if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts to anger him. Yahweh is used to his children being disobedient and hard-headed. And he's always given us examples of how he handles a hard heart. The message of the responsible person 
If today you hear Yahweh's voice harden at your heart, indicates Yahweh speaks to us far more than we all realize. Hallelujah. He speaks to us every day. Mm -hmm. He gives us prophetic warnings. He gives us signs and wonders. He gives us all kinds of examples to let us know that he's with us. He sees us. You don't want anybody to perish, but unfortunately, the way the world is going, and the way Hasatan has already established himself, many are going to per perish. Oh, yeah. If today you hear his voice, harden not, not your heart. In other words, be willing to make the time to hear his voice, despite your busy life. Hallelujah. We get so caught up in our own personal lives and what we want to do, we forget that we got a soul to save. That's right. Mm. And time is running out. Even in the book of Psalms, chapter 95 and verse 7, there the psalmist mentions how Yisraeli refused to trust the Most High during their time in the wilderness. Mm. And as a result of their disobedience, Yahweh denied them their rest, and they're barred, and they were barred, and barred that entire generation from entering into the promised land. Hallelujah. You know, when you look at Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 15, it alludes to an historical event in the Old Testament, mm. the provocation, oh, yeah. which refers to the Israelites' disobedience and the lack of faith in Yahweh during their time. Mm -hmm. Yahweh lets us know and gives us an opportunity <coughs> to get our lives together. But unfortunately, that silent killer, procrastination, mm -hmm. fools us and tells us we got, we got enough time, we got plenty of time to get it together. I'm amazed at how many altar calls I've made over the years and during my ministry and how many people who have totally just disregard the invitation. Hallelujah. And for whatever reason, procrastination, the word itself does not even appear in scripture. Yes. But there are some passages that certainly relate to this silent killer. Proverbs 27 and one says, do not boast about tomorrow. That's right. For you do not know what a day may bring. That's right. For Proverbs 21 and 25 in the same chapter says, the craving of a slugger, mm. procrastinator, procrastinator, would be the death of him mm. because his hands refuse to work. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9 through 10 tells us the Most High does not delay and does not expect mm -hmm. that behavior in his people. Hallelujah. Yes, Yahweh allowed the psalmist to write in the 40th Psalms, verse 16 through 17, do not delay, O my Most High. Some say that procrastination can lead to delayed Obedience, decisional inertia, and neglected relationships, and spiritual lives. Others say that procrastination is an attempt to regulate emotions like boredom, stress, fear, and self-doubt. Of course, these are some that the secular world gives us. But today, if you hear his voice, Harden not your heart. Yahweh can only deal with a softened heart. And unfortunately, people today have taken it upon themselves to do it their way instead of Yahweh's way. Yes. Probably the greatest, most powerful impact man has encountered here on earth is the deception of the evil one, Hasatan, we know as the devil, Satan. Hallelujah. And Satan has deceived the whole world with 
the counterfeit, the falsehood, and the introduction of pagan and false names. As a result, and you're correct, Elder Green. Fools do despise wisdom Amen. and instruction. Yes, sir. And as a result, Yahshua told us Hallelujah. in John chapter 5, I sound like a broken record. <laughs> but in John chapter 5, Hallelujah. and I'll keep reading it, I'll keep sharing it. That's right. That's right. As long as I can. Hallelujah. While I can. And I want you to certainly understand what Hamashiach is saying. Oh, yes. Because the world has totally ignored Amen. this passage of Scripture. Mm. In John chapter 5, Yahshua starts off, and I'm not going to read all of that, but Yahshua starts off that after this there was a, a feast of the Hebrews and Yahshua went up to Jerusalem and he talked about a pool mm -hmm. a pool called Bethesda right. and Bethesda was a great pool because in the second verse of the fifth chapter he says now there there is at Jerusalem by the sheep's market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda oh, yeah. having five porches and these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For a Malachian, an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the trouble, troubling of the water stepped in, it was made whole or whatsoever disease he had. So in other words, this pool had miraculous powers yes. and had been visited by a Malachian. Now, that's a beautiful story, but as we move on, Yahshua encounters in the 19th verse, Then answered Yahshua and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he see, seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead and quicken them, even so the Son quicken whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgments. Look, look who the judgment is committed to. The Son being Yahshua. I told you a few moments about the two judgments. Yes. The judgment seat of Yahshua HaMashiach and the white judgment seat. And the great white throne is going to be for the unbelievers. But here's what I want you to hear quickly. And you go down to the, um, I'm going to start at the 31st verse so you get a better understanding. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that heareth, that beareth witness. of me, and I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. <clears throat> you sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the what? Truth. True. But I received not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye may be saved. Now what is Joshua going to say that we might be saved? Look at verse, verse 35. He was, a, he was a burning and shining light. Yea, ye were willing for a, a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Now watch that. He said, he's, he's, he's talking to someone. He's going to identify 
And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time. Now these are religious leaders that Yahshua was addressing. And he's telling them, you've never heard Yahweh's voice. Now you would think somebody who's supposed to be a spiritual leader would be in touch with Yahweh. He said, you've never heard his voice at any time. And you have not his words abiding in you. Yahweh's words ain't in you. These are the religious leaders of that day. He said, you've never heard his voice. And his word is not in you. Let's go and look at what he says. For whom he hath sent him, you believe not. He says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Look at the question. Mm. And, they are, and, and they are they which testify of me. Mm -hmm. Search the scriptures. Investigate. Investigate. Research. Go into the scriptures which he's telling them, you don't know that neither. Because he just said the word ain't in you. You ain't never heard, you never heard Yahweh's voice. He never spoken to you and the word's not in you. But here's what I want you to see. He said, search the scriptures. These are the religious leaders of that day. And you will not come to, and, and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Now he's saying search the scriptures because now he's setting up He's setting up and letting them know who's addressing them. Right. He said, I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of Yahweh where? In you. Uh -oh. You don't have his voice in you. You've never heard his voice. You don't know his word. I told you to search the scriptures because if you knew the scriptures, you would know that the scriptures have already testified and prophesied of me. Yet I'm standing right here in front of you and you don't know it. But how can you hear his voice and harden your heart in, in such a day? Well, let, let's read on. That procrastination is a silent killer. Mm -hmm. I've come in my father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, guess what? Him you will receive. Now in some translations you see in the passage where it says, I've come in my father's name and you receive me not. But he says, but others are coming in their own name and you're going to receive them. Mm. Well, let's put it in modern day 2024 terms. Yahshua said over 2,000 years ago, Allah, Buddha, Jehovah, Krishna, Adonai, Theos, Dominos, all are coming and you're going to receive all of them. Mm. you even going to receive Jehovah. He said, others are going to come in their own name. You're going to receive them. But look what he said. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from Yahweh only? Well, you guys are all wrapped up into yourselves. You don't know the word. And how many, and how many vessels today behind poor pits are leading thousands upon thousands straight to hell, through disobedience, through procrastination, to just right being outright stubborn to accept Yahweh's truth. Hallelujah. 44 says, how can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that coming from Yahweh only? Do not think that I have, that I will accuse you to the Father. He said, he said, first of all, look, I'm not going to stand here and accuse you before Yahweh. There's somebody who's already done that. Look at verse 45. There is one that accuseth you, and he identifies him, even Moshe, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, Moshe, you would have believed me. Yes. For he wrote, for he wrote, of me. Yes. Moses wrote about you, Yahshua? He wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Oh, yeah. Yahshua said, You didn't believe Moses, so I don't expect you to believe, and I know you won't believe me. That's it. But yet I come in my father's name. Here's what procrastinate that silent killer would do. 
There have been from generation to generation, generation to generation, vessels Yahweh has raised up yes. at different times. Yes. There's one little fellow over there on Granby Street, 2808 Granby Street, and not just him alone. There are elders and ministers and sisters right there in that little building who are crying loud and holding up the name of Yahweh. Hallelujah. And they are not by themselves. Do you not think ever that 2808 Granby Street this little beacon right here is by itself. It is among millions and millions who have gone on before us. Oh, yes. Who were proclaiming Yahweh before we were even born. Mm. So I want to encourage you today as that silent killer, procrastination, is lurking and moving among us. That the day you hear Yahweh's voice, and it's not just an altar call to come to salvation, but Yahweh calls us every day and his voice beckons us every day to be about our father's business. And as I look at scripture, and it talks about some of the procrastinations, 1 Corinthians 14 and 4 tells us, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way, yes. decently and in order. That's right. When you see scripture, and when you see services that are now being interrupted, by different mindsets, mm. totally out of the word. For example, scriptures, services now being led by transgenders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Terrible, terrible. Somebody who decided, someone, someone standing before a congregation who is so confused mm -hmm. that they were born one gender and they decided somewhere down the line <laughs> they want to be another gender. Well, inside, I'm a woman. <laughs> and now you've taken your pants off and put a dress on. You still got an Adam's apple and you still shave every day. You got a wig on your head, but you're still a man. Mm -hmm. And now you are leading a congregation. That's so. And we're looking and we're looking at a world where if you don't accept this behavior, <clears throat> then you don't have love. <laughs> you don't have love and you are totally just one given all kinds of names, names of hatred and hate, Come on, because you follow a book of over 2,000 years old. Wow. Well, you know, when you look at the word, so, Ecclesiastes 9, 10 says, whatever your hand find to do, do it with all your might. Uh -oh. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge. And when I look at this passage, no knowledge or wisdom. Ecclesiastes 11 and 4 tells us, whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. These are, these are, these are, these, these are scriptures. On, listen to the wisdom in this, in this procrastination, this Ooh, silent yes. killer. Oh, yes. Hebrews 12 and 11 tell us, no, dis no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained. By it. Nothing new under the sun. Hosea 10 and 12 tells us, sow righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up your unplowed ground. For it is time to seek Yahweh until he comes and shower his righteousness on you. It's time now to wake up out of sleep. It's time now to learn from the past. Don't be like those in the day of provocation, those who chose to disobey Yahweh and for their punishment, Yahweh allowed them not to enter into the promised land. They died in the wilderness. Hallelujah. And there are a lot of wilderness wanderers right now in 2024 who have chosen that same disobedient posture. I will never call him Yahweh or his son Yahshua. He is the Lord Jesus Christ to me. Oh my goodness. Such a defiant spirit and such a behavior, so much so that even logical, everyday 
common sense tell you this? When have you ever known two Hebrew parents to give their baby a Greek name? And even in this day and time, in Iran, in Iran, the deity that was worshipped in Iran or Persia was Zeus. And Zeus today has a modern name, Jesus. And it's cleverly disguised because anyone who goes against the name of Jesus under the auspices of Christianity on the outs, the world hates the name Yeshua. Hallelujah. They don't hate the name Jesus. They hate the name Yeshua. That's it. And then and then and then the messianic so-called Jews try to spin it and call themselves hiding the name of Yahweh by giving us the name Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Or some pronounce it Yeshua. And all Y-E-S-H-U-A means is he is salvation. Mm -hmm. The question is, who is he? Uh -oh. He is salvation. Who is he? And then Acts 4 and 12 comes back and says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men. He, it didn't say a pronoun, it said a name That's right. under heaven. That's a proper name. It didn't say he. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Everywhere the, everywhere the devil went to try to camouflage and twist this thing. Yahweh had a scripture to back it up. Came right back and backed it up. You can't get around Hashem. Hallelujah. The name. You can't get around that. And at the end of the day, when you're looking at procrastination, Luke chapter 12 and verse 40 tells us, you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. He's coming at a time when you do not expect him. Some are going to be at the outback when Yahshua will come. <laughs> and Pastor is going to be very transparent this morning. Some of y'all are going to be in the laboratory. Oh, my goodness. Taking care of your distribution. You made a, you made a, you made a commitment. Now you're making a deposit. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm being as clean as I can on YouTube. But in the hour that you think not, the Son of Man is going to do what? Come. He coming. He coming. Well, when I look at this hardened heart, don't harden your heart as it was in the day of provocation. Don't harden your Yahweh is speaking. Yahweh speaks every Sunday. On YouTube. Mm. Yahweh speaks every Sunday in this assembly. Mm. And the call is always put up. If you out of the ark of safety, get it together. You know what? There's nothing more important on this earth. And Pastor, you got to be real clear about this. There ain't nothing on this earth worth losing your soul. Hallelujah. Nothing. nothing. The scripture goes on to say, what profit a man to gain the whole world and do what? Lose his soul. Lose his soul. Well, you know, I like my car. I like my truck. Your truck, your truck will put you in hell? Your car will send you to hell? Well, I like my house. I like my bank account. And all of it gonna burn. Every last bit of it's gonna burn. Wait a minute, hold it. Do you know how much that Rolls Royce and that Bentley cost? Yahweh don't care about your Bentley and your Rolls Royce. So much. All of it gonna burn. This earth is gonna burn. You know, these are not, these are not, 
These are not ear candy sermons. You see, see, this sermon here is not an ear candy sermon. This sermon here don't make you feel good. It makes you, it, it makes you to think about and make an assessment of your life and where you're going to spend eternity. That's right. And for the fool to say there is no Yahweh, what's that, the 14th Psalm? Mm. The fool is saying that in his heart there is no Yahweh. That's right. That's right. And you, and you think you wake yourself up every morning. Can anybody in here tell me exactly down to the second last night when you went to sleep? No. No. If you so you so smart, what time did you fall off to sleep last night? You didn't track it. You didn't track it, and it can't track it. And it won't your alarm clock that woke you up this morning. If you heard it, who you think gave you to hear it? And if you were able to turn over and look at the clock to see what time it was, who do you think gave you the sight to oh, see it? Hallelujah. Before the mountains were brought forth, before the world was even formed, from Olam to Olam, from everlasting to everlasting, I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh. My name is not Hebrew. I reveal my name to the Hebrew Come who on. I made. Come on now. Come on. Said that tell me. On, well, you know, that's the Hebrew name. <laughs> no, it ain't. You telling me the creator of mankind, the creator of the universe, didn't have no name until he made the Hebrew people? <laughs> And I know some get offended when I say this, but that's certainly being stuck on stupid. They talked about the sea this morning in Yona in the Sunday school lesson. I told him, I told him, I told him the world thinks it was a whale. Yahweh said he prepared a special fish that's just right. for Yona. That's right. And I don't know what the sleeping quarters must have looked like. But he was able to stay in that fish for three days and three nights alive. Hallelujah. And while in there, he had time to do some thinking and processing. <laughs> and see, sometimes Yahweh got to get our attention through sickness, through death. Through pain. But if he has a call on your life, if he has ordained and predestinated before you were even formed in the womb, that he had a purpose for you. Every last, by, every last person who's hearing my voice right now, every last one of you, Yahweh has a purpose for your life. And the only thing that interrupts that purpose oftentimes is that silent killer called procrastination. Yahweh gives all of us an opportunity to get it together. Altar calls are made every Sunday. I'll make one at the end of this message. And since COVID-19, since the interruption of COVID-19, it has come in and put a huge, a huge disparity, even in our worship, our service, and all that we try to do. Don't let COVID-19 and virtual and the virtual uh, technology deprive you and keep you from making it into the kingdom of heaven. Come on now. You don't need a minister to put his physical hands on you to pray for you and pray you through to receive the Ruach HaKadosh. You can receive it right where you're sitting right now. Well, the reason I didn't get filled with the Spirit because COVID-19 came and I couldn't, I couldn't go to the church and go for prayer. That's a weak excuse. Excusable. That would give us all of us an opportunity. The sad thing about these kind of sermons and these kind of messages, the day you hear his voice, he says soften. We are conditioned and prone 
to have hard hearts. That's our nature. Satan gives us a hard heart. He convinces us that we got a better way than Yahweh. Come on now. It's either my way or no way. Yahweh says there's only one way. That's right. And in the new covenant, that, that one way was Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Yahshua went on to say in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. You the he is not kidding about what he's saying. He is the way. Amen. Yes. Peter, Kepha, as we know, did not say in Acts 2.38, Repent every one of you and listen to how listen 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 to how crazy this sounds and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Proper now. Listen to that scripture, how it's being read today and presented to congregations. <laughs> Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was taught in school, anytime the word the, or how you want to pronounce it, the, is ever used, it is introducing something. That's right. That's right. Very simple. That's right. The house, the cat, the fish, the dog. Mm. The car. <laughs> the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. So you are telling me that an Aramaic speaking Galilean on that day, said to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What somebody said, what somebody said, what, what, he, what he said in the Hebrew, Yeshua. No, he didn't say Yeshua. You're halfway right. Mm -hmm. But he said Yeshua, Hamashiach. And that didn't change then, and it don't change now. If that be the case, every culture on the earth can stick in a name to be baptized in. They're going to say it in Chinese. They're going to say it in Russian. They're going to say it in Spanish. They're going to say, they're going to say it in Italian. You don't change your proper name. You can't change it. And as much as we, as much as we don't want to buy it, Kepha didn't say that. And for these preachers out here who are proclaiming and telling people you got to be you got to be baptized in the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, mm. they're being baptized not in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. They're being baptized in a made up name by man, fabricated by man. Yes, I said it. And come and prove me wrong. Can't okay, do it. He was Galilean. He spoke Aramaic. That's right. He didn't speak English. wasn't even on the earth at the time. You you're gonna you're gonna mix up old English and Greek <laughs> in the thirty eighth verse because Jesus comes from the Greek name Jesus and Jesus comes from the Latin name Jesus and Jesus can be tra traced all the way back to the Greek Zeus mm -hmm. and who was the primary Greek deity at that time of Yahshua's time Zeus. Oh, yeah. Gabriel didn't tell Miriam and Matthew 121, she shall bring forth a son and thou shall call his name Yeshua. And he shall save, which is what the name means, his people from their sins. Notice the scriptures didn't say he shall save the world from his sin. He said his people. Because originally he came for his people. And because the Hebrew world rejected him, it opened the door for the Gentiles. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that door is going to be closing soon. But procrastination right now, that silent killer, and that hardened heart that folk got right now, and even right now, folk who call themselves believers, but I really, really think about this going to the polls mm. in November. Does Yahweh endorse and condone homosexuality? Does Yahweh endorse or condones abortion? Shedding 
in a simpler. I heard, I heard a commentator recently on CNN. I had to applaud the brother. They were going back and forth on trying to support the candidate who's supporting and endorsing women's rights and LBGTQ community and all of that. <laughs> That's out there. And the gentleman made a statement. He says, I'm speaking for the babies because they can't speak for themselves. I'm speaking for the babies because they can't speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. Scripture says every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. Confessions are going to be made at both thrones. The only problem with the great white throne, you ain't got to worry about an appeal. Your fate is already sealed. You already know where you're going. And those of us who are going to appear before the judgment seat of Yahshua, we're going to give an account of every deed done in the body. Yahshua is going to deal with us on that behalf. But if you have an opportunity, if you've heard the sermons down through the years, the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Right now, it's an opportunity for many of us to get it together. Hallelujah. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. Proverbs 12 and 24. Proverbs 13 and 4, a, slugger, a slugger's appetite is never filled. Watch this. But the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. Proverbs 18 and 9. Sluggers, and for some reason, yet a dies Solomon Love that word slugger. In Proverbs 20 and 4, he says, Sluggers do not plow in season. So at harvest time, they look, but they don't find nothing. All right. Proverbs 27 and 1 says, Boast, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. We leave it here today. None of us are expecting to get in an accident, pray Yahweh, don't happen. But all things happen, and we don't know or have an idea of what's going to happen. Hallelujah. Be very careful. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. Be very careful. Then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. That's right. Therefore, do not be foolish, Come on now. but understand what Yahweh's will is. Yahweh's will is simple. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Then the next verse says, it's 17, Yahweh did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, Hallelujah. but that through his son the world might be saved. 18 goes on to say that he that believeth in him is not condemned. Here's the part that really makes me real nervous. But he that believeth not is judged already. Hallelujah. Yes. Look at the conjunction. Because he have not believed in the name of of the only begotten son. son. Son of man only got one name. Hallelujah. Some folks say, well, you know, when you said Jesus and Yahshua, you're talking about the same one. No, we're not. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the same one. That's the lie and the deception that the, that the enemy has given us. When you said Jesus and Yahshua, you ain't talking about the same one. No, sir. Luke chapter 9, verse 59 through 62, and I'm almost finished. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Yahshua, first, 
Let me go and bury my father. Uh -oh. Yahshua said to him, let the dead bury the dead. Their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Still another one said to him, I will follow you, Yahshua, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Uh -uh. <laughs> Yahshua replied and said this, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of Yahweh. And these parables, these parables hit home. They hit home because what they tells us is that family is not more important than Yahweh. That's right. The scripture tells us that husband and wife is not more important than Yahweh. Hallelujah. Scripture tells us that your child. That's in the world. And here's what scripture says. Any man that loved mother, father, sister, and brother more than me, uh -oh. Yahshua says, is not worthy of me. Hallelujah. He said, I have not come to bring peace. I have come to separate. Oh, yes. Yahshua, wait a minute, that don't sound like love. <laughs> Yahshua, that don't sound like love. Wait a minute, Yahshua, you know I love my daughter, I love my son. Yes, and that human part of you will always be there. But at the end of the day, the scripture tells you to save yourself from this untoward generation. That's right. Daughter, son, husband, wife cannot save you. They won't be standing at the judgment seat with you. And some may think mom and daddy are going to be there to speak on your behalf. You better go back and read your scriptures again. Mom and daddy are going to be standing on their own behalf. Hallelujah. Every man, every woman for himself. Didn't you hear them sermons when you when you when you were a part of the living on earth? Didn't you hear the calls and the altar calls that were made for my servants? Mm -hmm. And you chose to procrastinate. You chose to allow that silent killer to get into your head mm -hmm. and tell you you got time. Yeah. That song, that song, and I won't put, I won't call a pun in today. But that song that Minister Butler sings, Yahshua said, here I stand. Hallelujah. Won't you please take my hand? Yes. You said, I will tomorrow. Hallelujah. Yahshua says, I am he, the one who supplies all your needs. You said, I know. But tomorrow. Hallelujah. Tomorrow? Mm. Who promised you tomorrow? Not promise. Not promise. Won't you give your life today? That's right. And please, please don't walk away. Mm. Tomorrow, tomorrow is not promised. Won't you choose this Yahweh today? Hallelujah. And you said tomorrow will never come. Mm. Will never come. A lot of folk are under that impression that tomorrow, Yahshua, will never come. Hallelujah. Still you choose to sit there and just walk away? Won't you give your life today? Hallelujah. Tomorrow. Who promised you tomorrow? For tomorrow could very well be too late. Too late. Hallelujah. Too late. Silent killer. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Choose next month. What you going to vote? Mm. My candidate is, you may have heard of him, is Yahshua HaMashiach. I'm voting for him and for his way. Because he told me that he was the way. I know no other way to find the Father. Yahshua is the way. Let's give Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to have closing remarks and benediction from Associate Elder Elder Ronald Green. Let's receive him with a hearty hallelujah. hallelujah. With a hearty hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Y'all look at me. Yahweh Barak, you all, in the face of what we heard today and the information that has gone forth on this uh, dissemination, process of dissemination of information that has been put on over the internet and so forth. We must adhere to the truth. It is not discretionary. It is not a possibility. But one fact exists for sure. Proverbs 1 7. Fools! Fools! Fools despise wisdom and Instruction. What is the instruction? We heard it today. We to trust Yahweh. We to believe in Yah, not anything or anyone else, not some whims or caprice or possibility. It's for certain. Yahweh is coming back, yes, he is. and he's going to have his son to reign over this existence that we're in. Hallelujah. So let us prepare ourselves for his return. And for those that choose to do otherwise, that's on them. That's not on us. We have warned them. We have told them We've tried to reach out to them in some way. And then some don't even want you to touch base with them. They will kill you rather than you talk to them. That's how serious they are to cut yes, you will. off yes, from the communication of truth. So let us continue to pray for them. That Yahweh give them a mind and a heart, a change of heart to accept the truth and the essence of Yah because that's been generational disenfranchisement of the truth where it has been diminished and dissolved foolishly dissolved rather than accepted by the world in its way through the languages and dialects that have been disseminated and spoken to each other. Amen. So, with that in mind, with uplifted hands, may Yahweh continue to give us a mind to uphold his truth and his word both now and forever. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah!
Thank you.